Hello there, you beautiful people. My name is Willow, and welcome back to Supreme Commander of Forge Alliance Forever, where today we're going to be looking at a 1v1 played on the map as Garoth's Ruins. So we're going to go ahead and get into introducing our players, but before we do, consider liking and or subscribing. And we're going to go ahead and get into introductions with the Red Seraphim by the name of Kelly going first land. And then in the southwest corner, he is the Aeon representative. He plays Aeon as much as I do. And actually, let's just be honest, he plays more than me. So he plays Aeon more than I do. He is the blue player, and he is gone first land. His name is Tom Ruler. And he's gone first land. So... With that out of the way, we have the map to look at. There's a decent amount of reclaim, about 3,000. It's a relatively small map, 5x5 five five kilometer. It's been in one or maybe two casts before. It's been on Steps Dual Ladder, definitely. <laughs> I think it's actually been on Steps Dual Ladder twice. But these players are not of the Steps Dual variety. They are much, much higher rated than that. And we are going to be seeing exactly how they get on with it. There is an engineer making its way over to the Hydro for Kelly, as there is not the same for Tom Ruler, so slightly different openers. Very early scout this spirit over here in the middle, trying to just get some intel. We have this nice water effect here with the uh, rocks on top. The rocks are reclaimable, which is a very nice feature that I'd like to see in more maps. The ice kind of just sitting here. I know they're not rocks, they're like ice chunks, but a very cool looking map. And, of course, the spirit's gonna come out here. It's probably gonna die to the thumb. Yep, one shot, and that spirit is dead. And that's gonna be the end of that life for the spirit. But it gives some valuable intel as to what's going on on the map. And we're gonna see how it goes. See if the Aeon are going to reign supreme, as they very often do. Or if the dirty, filthy Seraphim are going to be able to make their way forward onto victory with their chicken legs and their weird building systems and their curviness. Ugh. Actually, I can't say anything about curviness. Aeon is also quite curvy. They're, they're chrome domes. We have a Selene about to kill an engineer. That's going to be an unfortunate loss for Tom Ruler. Oh, man, that last shot before the Selene had to move managed to kill off the engineer, and that's going to be... A kill racked up for the Selene also manages to kill off a scout. Getting that rank of veterancy means it regenerates health and is going to kill off the flare as it slightly outranges it as it runs away. And there we go, Selene getting out with its life. The Thom tank over here has picked up a kill, but it's not getting much more done. And these players going to keep on going at it. Uh, Kelly, of course, having a rank advantage. He's 200 rating points exactly above the likes of Tom Ruler. So Tom Ruler has his work cut out for him, but I know he's a decent player and he can take on anybody on a good day. So we will we will see. I say that a lot, but uh, it is very often true. These nice little cybern trucks. I don't really know how you call it a truck. I mean, I guess it's a, it could be like a semi-truck or something, but like, it doesn't have a bed. It's just a cybern car. A very big car, because you, you do have to take into account that like, an engineer is taller than a human. Like, it's a very, very big car. Like, a human fits inside just the little head portion of these things, and that's bigger than the head portion of... Yeah, like that head is complete living space for the a for the Aeon commander inside. Like the uh, everything you need to survive. Toilet. There's one of those in the head of an ACU. So keep that on your mind. I mean, right now all we're looking at is a tiny screen, and then whenever you turn around from this tiny screen, you well, since we're in, for some reason UEF viewer, which is the only one that shows up in replays, it seems. Uh, you you'll turn around and you'll see the. The, the lavatory and like the bed and all of that other stuff. Okay, now that I'm done talking about lore for some reason, we have a bit of an engagement happening. Selene going down. I think that was our hero Selene from earlier. I don't see another Selene on the map, so most likely the hero Selene going down. The Aurora's gonna have to fall back. They're gonna start taking some damage, but more Aurora show up. That range advantage is gonna start coming into play. But the Thumbs, of course, once they get in range, the Aurora's just evaporate. 
But overall, that trade, I think, went better for Tom Ruler. He might lose this mix, though, which would be unfortunate. The comm of Kelly moving out quite quickly over here in the front line, getting very close to the main base of Tom Ruler. And speaking of which, there is a burning building over here. I guess the building was just, like, he stopped building on it for some reason, so it's caught on fire as it almost died. And we have a bomber out from Kelly. Let's keep an eye on its progress. See exactly what's gonna what it's gonna pick up. Well, never mind. Couldn't couldn't manage it. Hasn't managed to kill anything yet. But if this bomb lands, it's killing off multiple Aurora. But no, the Aurora dodged the shot out of the bomber. T1 bombers exceptionally effective versus the Aurora with their lower HP. The bomb can one-shot them. Uh, there you go, you see that happening. Usually it takes two shots from a bomber to kill off most of the T1 tanks. At least I think that's the case. The radar going down to the bomber, and then the bomber gets shot down by the Thistle, mobile air, mobile anti-air. But this does introduce an interesting problem now for Tom Ruler. He has no air factory, so he cannot build interceptors to compete with the air power of Kelly. So Kelly kind of just has free range to build T1 bombers till the end of time. You can also, of course, build things like scouts to help him out. Thoms over here on the west side, pushing in towards the outward economy of Tom Ruler. Tom Ruler gonna have to find a way to deal with this. It does look like he has his own Aurora on the way over here. And if these Thoms aren't micro to come attack the Aurora or, fall or run away, then they will die. They do not have the range to compete. Tom Ruler now pushing forward, reclaiming that mech that was taken out by the comm of Kelly, and he's going to kill off some Thoms on his own with that gun. He does not have the gun upgrade as of the moment. There are no upgrades started on either side for any of these commanders. No Seraphim upgrades, no Aeon upgrades, just T1 goodness. They're going to punch each other in the face with T1 units until, well, either one of them dies or they both live to become the villain. <laughs> Thoms pushing forward, just having a nice stroll through the Winter Wonderland that is Esgaroth's Ruins. And, uh, yeah. T1 Bomber coming in for another pass. Has two kills on it, but is gonna go down to the Thistles. Uh, there is an air factory now finished up for Tom Ruler, so he will be able to get out some interceptors to deal with this, but the T1 anti-air doing quite well for itself. And down goes the bomber once again. But the bomber is getting a free trade. It drops a bomb, kills some units, and then dies. That's, that's not exactly what you want to be seeing if you are Tom Ruler right now. Let's go ahead and check on the reclaim numbers. 1.9,000 for Tom Ruler, 2.7,000 for Kelly. Overall economy, Tom Ruler quite behind. 19 mass a second versus the 35 of Kelly. Tom Ruler not quite able to keep hold of all of these mass extractors, and now the production is about to start biting Tom Ruler. He's not going to be able to keep producing at the same level as Kelly. He does have the Aurora, so he can make some more efficient trades if he micros perfectly, but at the same time, that is difficult. Going to need to get that comm involved to get any kind of efficiency and to get back into this game economically. And we have scouts flying around for both sides. We have a T1 bomber now out for Tom Ruler. Is it going to be able to get anything significant? I'm not sure. There are interceptors built up for both sides. Maybe, or there were interceptors earlier, but that bomb going to get huge value. Four units going down to the bomb of Kelly. Tom Ruler getting chunks taken out of his military for the simple fact of not having nearly enough anti-air or interceptors to deal with this. But it looks like there is even numbers of interceptors out on the field to start contesting this air game. Tom Ruler will finally have a leg in this race. He has some units over on the east side raiding, getting in, doing that good, good economic damage. And now there are Thoms getting themselves into a pickle. Uh, one Aurora is probably going to go down, but in exchange, the Thom is dead. And there is another bomber out on the field. Can it get the same value that the, uh, the one from earlier got? Could see a large focus on pouring damage in this comm, which just started speed and range. That speed and range upgrade coming online very quickly. Uh, that bomber not quite so efficient, only getting three tanks, but that may be enough as the army of Kelly is now coming in to defend his comm. He has to cancel the speed and range upgrade, which is a little bit unfortunate for him, 
but he's still in a strong position overall. Overall economies, 25 mass a second for Tom Ruler versus the 33 of Kelly. Overall reclaim, it's evened up quite a bit. Tom Ruler sitting at 3,000 versus 3.1 thousand for Kelly. So these players very even on all of the measurable metrics. And right now we're going to be seeing a engagement between Aurora and Thom down here in the south. It's going the way of Tom Ruler, but he's going to lose that mass extractor. And he's not going to be able to hold on to this for very long. He's probably not even going to finish it. I would, yeah, it might be a good idea to stop even building it since the tanks can just come down and kind of deal with them. Speed and range on the way for Kelly. S range on the way for Tom Ruler. The question is, can he keep his comm protected long enough to get that range upgrade? And Kelly's not really under any threat, so I don't think we have to worry about that. But if this gets canceled, the speed and range upgrade is just going to run him over. He's going to also want to get speed onto that comm or some other upgrade. Maybe sensors if you want to make sure that you can always fire at that max range and get really good overcharges. But that is, of course, an option that he can take or leave on the table. Range was cancelled for Tom Ruler. I don't think that was the right call. I think he should have kept going with range. The Zooies were getting cleaned up. Maybe he thought he couldn't afford it. He does have T2 land now and is going to start reclaiming some of these T1 factories he had built up. T2 power generator on the way. Do we have T2 land on the way for the likes of... Yes, we do. We have a T2 land factory, 59% done. T2 land going to finish up a little bit earlier for Tom Ruler. He's going to start building blazes. Blaze is a good option whenever you're dealing with T1 units, but once you get, once you get to those T2 brawls, blazes get a little bit less efficient. And you want to switch over to obsidians instead. Range now yet again on the way for Tom Ruler. I do not know why he canceled earlier. He definitely did not need to. There was not enough Zooies there to really pressure the comm. Speed and range finishing up for Kelly. If he starts abusing it immediately, it's going to put a very difficult situation for Tom Ruler to deal with as that upgrade is going to finish up in about 40 seconds. It will be 40 seconds before he even has a comm that can just challenge the range of Kelly. And the speed upgrade definitely helps him out quite a bit. These Aurora need to move back or commit to a full fight. And it does look like falling back is the option. He shift G's as I showed in my tutorial that I put out yesterday. A very good strategy to get your units moving faster. It makes them move faster in any situation really. The only downside to it is they stream in single file, which is something you don't really want. And I'm noticing now he has way too many spirits mixed in with this. Needs to get less of a he spirit heavy mixture going on for his units. He's going full T2 land factories, but I don't think he can afford it. He can't afford to even run all of these support factories at the same time. He's gonna have trouble. Speed is 69% done, a very nice number. A large push over on the eastern side out from Tom Ruler, going to give him some pressure, maybe force Kelly's comm back, buy him some time. That seems to be the goal at the moment for Tom Ruler, but he is ever so slightly behind economically, and it's really going to start hurting him very soon. Ilshava is now coming onto the field. There's already some T2 units out on the field for Tom Ruler. He also has some Asylum Shield Generators. This one needs to be careful not to just roam into the range of Kelly, who could just blap away and ruin the entire career of that Asylum. And that is exactly what's happening. This Asylum needs to start falling back, as Kelly is going to fire into this quite quack, quite quackery I don't know what I was going for that quite quickly and going to be able to destroy that shield turn it into a much less useful unit Tom Ruler now all out on the field looks like he managed to get speed done as well he built speed in 59 seconds so that was a good setup he managed to survive long enough to get his own speed and range upgrade done but that is not enough in and of itself the asylum shield generators will help out a lot able to soak up a lot of damage and if he starts building ob obsidians he will be in a very good spot but i don't even know if he can afford obsidians as i said earlier he can't really afford these factories he's gonna have to get some t2 mexes online and he's working on it but it's just kind of slowing down everything he's trying to do in this game and he is still, as I said, behind economically. There's already multiple T2 mexes, four of them done for Kelly. There's not even one finished yet for Tom Ruler. Tom Ruler needs to start taking really efficient trades and really putting pressure onto Kelly and start making Kelly make mistakes. He has to start forcing errors right now because at the moment he is just behind. 
a lot of Kelly's units are now being committed over here towards Tom Ruler's Com and this small army with him. He's mainly a force of Aurora, and there are more and more Elshavas being built by the minute. So does need to be careful. He has a better power economy for sure at the moment, but that's not exceptionally useful except for overcharge at the moment and of course running your factories. Tom Ruler now under some pressure from the Zulis out from Kelly and a battle is now commencing. Kelly starting to push back Tom Ruler and he's going to be in a tough position now as this large battle takes place. And it definitely looks like Kelly is getting into range and dealing a lot of damage with overcharges and that gun comm, getting a lot of value out of his units right now. And it looks like the army of Tom Ruler is just about to be evaporated. It's just gone. There is no army left. It's kind of just a comm and a mobile shield set up at the moment. And these units can kind of just flank west and start going towards the main base. Of course, Tom Ruler can just send his comm back towards the main base. But without the economy to run this, he's just in a bad position. Down, to, He's at 25 mass a second, which is less than he was at earlier, mainly just because he's lost a lot of mass extractors out in the field. Kelly sitting smooth at 45 mass a second, able to afford everything he wants at this point in the game. And he's kind of just constricting Tom Ruler out of the game. He just has more map control. He has more mass extractors built up, and Tom Ruler just does not have the economy right now to keep up with the production coming out of Kelly. He tried to do a hard switch into T2 and it's just not working for him. There's still a ton of T1 units out here dealing damage and causing issues. Zooies and Thumbs, Zooies and Thumbs. Just running their way in towards the main base of Tom Ruler. If he manages to get up a few blazes, maybe he can deal with this, but it's gonna be a very micro intensive force for him to be able to get through this without taking too much damage. The T2 mass extractor gonna go down. He just finished that one. There's another one that's been finished, but oh my word, that's just brutal. Losing that T2 mass extractor after stunting his production for such an insane amount of time just to get up to full T2 production is gonna be brutal. And he might even lose a second T2 mass extractor if, he, mass extractor if he's not paying extra close attention. And it's just going down. One or two thumbs are just firing at it and starting to cause some issue. He has a blaze now heading down to start dealing with that. I don't know if you can see these other two thumbs sitting back here, but if he loses the other T2 mechs, this is just most likely over. He'd have to get very lucky with a comm duel, and I don't even know if a tom comm duel would go in his advantage. Maybe with some asylums, and if no units out from Kelly manage to show up. But despite this, he's managed to keep that T2 mechs alive, but is it is it even enough because he's just losing t1 maxes everywhere in a very rough position right now is tom ruler and kelly is sitting pretty getting up multiple factories produce t2 units and he's going to be able to throw a lot of ilshavas onto the field very soon and that's going to be difficult for tom ruler to deal with he just does not have as i said the economy he doesn't have the mass to really produce these units in a amount that he would like of course reclaim is really going to help with that large force pushing in towards him he's going to be able to get a lot of reclaim going but is reclaim enough to keep him afloat right now he is a few thousand mass ahead on reclaim totals but as it's a much less consistent economy out from tom ruler another fight seemingly breaking out over here in the north a lot of asylum shield generators but very few units that actually deal damage there's some blazes mixed in here but that's just not quite as effective also doesn't really have a radar set up so these blazes not able to fire at their full range. Yeah, the, the blaze is going to have issues with combating units if they can't see them. It does look like there is a radar built. It's just he might be having power issues. I didn't even really check that. No, he's able to run it. Units popping in and out of his radar vision, I guess. Radar range, not really vision. I have radar vision! Fear me. Thumbs, Zooies, and Elshvas pushing down this western side again. Is it going to be enough to? Is there going to be enough to deal with this? It really just doesn't seem like it. it. Looks like Tom Ruler's in a rough position. Now on the eastern side, there's even more. He's just kind of boxed into a corner, and the map is very dark for him. Does not have the economy or the unit count to really deal with this. And I'm thinking it's probably GG. We have some obsidians now arriving on the field, but is it too much? It, it seems a too little too late. He reached for that T2 production really quickly. And in the end, we have to ask at 
what cost? It came at the cost of everything. He thanos it up. And he is now going to be in a horrible position for the rest of this game as... Yeah, is just looking a little bit homeless. Maybe, uh, homeless. Hopeless. Yes, it's looking very homeless. You can see his home here. It's getting destroyed. <laughs> oh, man. Somebody call... A firehouse. Or fi firehouse. Somebody call the fire department because th this man's house is burning down. Kelly over here, like, somebody call a doctor, but not for me. <laughs> oh, man. Blazes killing off Ilshavas, as they should. Uh, but Ilshavas now killing off Blazes, which is heresy. Oh wow, this Blaze really got the jukes. This Blaze got the jukes, man, on four kills! Oh, that Blaze is giving me hope again. Though the house is still on fire and burning down. It's it's just not a good situation. He can't afford to upgrade Mexes and meanwhile in the back line, we have T2 Mexes seemingly popping up everywhere now for Kelly. Kelly on more than triple the income of Tom Ruler. It's just a question of how is he wanting to end this game? Tom Ruler playing a very defensive game, but that is not a game where he's going to win. He just has no economy. Uh, we've talked about economics quite a bit, and much like the U.S. and the global economy right now, it's just crashing and burning. Stonks are way down. It's not a bullish market whatsoever. It's it's very it's very much so a very bad market. Please uh, drop time to drop all of your crypto and invest in gold is what I'm trying to say here for uh, Tom Ruler. The calm of Kelly now pushing forward on this western side. 44 kills and 2 veterancy. Tom Ruler at 51 kills and 2 veterancy, so... Veterancy not going one way or the other. And Kelly is seemingly having trouble closing this out. I'm going to speed it up a little bit as these players haven't fought for a little while. But now we have some engagements happening here in the south. The triple blazes, they don't have the jukes that their brethren had so not so long ago. And are not able to keep up with the fight that's going on. And it looks like Tom Ruler is trying to commit hard to locking down the Com of Kelly and fighting the Com of Kelly. Instead of fighting the army, just going for that commander, trying to get a kill onto it. If he can manage to get this entire army and his Com on top of Kelly, I think he might have a chance. But now Kelly is starting to reinforce this western side. He's going to have a lot of Ilshavas over here. He has T2PD. Looks like he's getting the Com somewhere safe, so that way he just doesn't have to risk losing to something silly. We, ne we are now seeing Tom Ruler trying to get his economy back online, trying to get more mass to spend on really anything. He's getting he's getting reclaim pretty consistently, and he's he's way ahead on reclaim, five thousand more reclaim, but overall in total mass accrued, he's down twenty thousand. And when the total mass accrued in this game is just 100,000, being down 20,000 mass is straight up just, it's, it's one-fifth of all of the mass in the game. And that's like a one-fifth advantage. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> right now, it's a, it's a three-fifths situation. Three-fifths of the economy have gone over to Kelly. That's how I should have described it in the first place. Three-fifths of all of the mass in the match. Which doesn't sound insurmountable, but it's quite heavy. It's quite a heavy tilt. And uh, now we can see even Tom Ruler, he's not having as efficient trades. He's losing, he's making less mass and using it less efficiently. So it's just kind of unfortunate. He's starting to get some map control back. He's starting to push out, but it might be too little. It might be too late. There's still yet to be that big fight. But now with nano repair onto the comm of Kelly, the only real option left is to just try and beat the army and deal with it. But T3 has finished up, and we have sniper bots on the field. 
it's feeling pretty doomed. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up. It's been a slightly one-sided cast, but it's still been a pretty fun one. And Tom Ruler looks like he might just die to sniper bots. I mean, he doesn't have the army to just approach these Ultravas and kill it off. He's gonna try anyways, but now there's sniper bots that are gonna have free range to fire on the Com of Tom Ruler, and this is the end for you, my friend. Let's go ahead and get the tracking camera onto him. Control V, and he's dead. That's the end of Tom Ruler. The Aeon are not always victorious, but we will come back stronger. Thank you all for watching. Thank you to my patrons. Timothy Calderwood, Icy Nightmare, Nogthar, Idle, uh, Idle Beta Zoid, and Mutant Gene Pool. You all have been beautiful and amazing, and I will see you in the next game. Bye bye